Well, this is called politics, and unfortunately, it's the taxpayer who usually ends up losing a political power struggle at the bitter end of a presidency. The $900 billion COVID relief bill was passed with veto-proof majorities in Congress. It really is a disgrace. But the bill isn't in jeopardy, right? Wrong. There's sort of a double impact, which is that if he does veto it, I mean, obviously that creates a real stumbling block, but he also shuts the government down. The president has 10 days to sign or veto the bill from the time it hits his desk. There are 11 days until a new Congress gets sworn in. So unless Congress sends him the bill today in its current form, the president could pocket it, taking no action for the next 10 days, effectively killing it or else the next administration will have to deliver a COVID relief package, and maybe that administration will be me. The bill in its current form provides a critical lifeline to struggling small businesses and revives unemployment benefits at $300 a week for 11 weeks. If the government shuts down... People run out of unemployment insurance, no stimulus payments to people struggling to put food on the table, and no vaccine distribution. The current bill also provides direct payments of $600 a person to most Americans. I am asking Congress to amend this bill and increase the ridiculously low $600 to $2,000. I'm for doing it. I'm in. It's not numbers. It's about humanity. If it means killing the bill, this extra money should be done in the next Congress and the next Bill. To expedite the process and avert a government shutdown, the more than 5,550 page bill was combined with the federal spending package that included standard foreign aid. $505 million to Belize, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala. And some legislative pet projects, better known politically as pork. $7 million for reef fish management. $25 million to combat Asian carp, $2.5 million to count the number of amberjack fish in the Gulf of Mexico. No one got everything that they wanted. I wanted more money uh, for child care. Yeah, I mean, I have a number of really important projects to me that are in this spending bill, the uh, cancellation of the sale of Plum Island, uh, funding for Long Island Sound. It's our job as members of the Senate to try to get as much funding in these bills for our states as possible. So the dance goes on. Tomorrow, the House is expected to vote on an amendment to increase those direct payments to $2,000, something that congressional Republicans have been hesitant to do in the past. All of this as the clock ticks closer to a shutdown. Reporting in New Haven, Matt Karen, Fox 61 News.